Hello there, my name is Aiden Calvin, welcome back to The Yard, episode 2394. So, Winter Edelgard is a unit in the game who has a reputation, fairly earned, for being the defining player phase unit, the most threatening Gale Force multiple action type of unit. With her movement, DR shred, flame terrain, special jump, she has it all. But what if I told you that there was something that the Final Heroes big wigs didn't want you to know about? A secret strategy involving Winter Edelgard that was more than simply this player phase force of nature. What if I told you that she could be... Well, what if I told you that the effects in her B skill are mostly her movement, charge, additional action, and a little bit of true damage and stats. That's a B skill, which means that her weapon has the fire, player phase only, special jump, uh, like 15 attack and defense, and most importantly of all, DR shred up to 90%. That means that if you take that B skill and replace it with four star long Q's vantage, you get a unit that can pretty reliably drop essentially bonfires on people. She could probably run Ignis, actually, with a little bit of a different team comp. And neutralize damage reduction that isn't special based. Which means that even on a unit like Yoon there, who probably had 100% DR, they get melted before they even have a chance to play. And here's a map where I'm playing super conservatively because this is an untested strategy that is very silly and probably doesn't work. But at the same time, if it does work, she can take on literally everything they have on the same turn. So we're just letting it rock, and here I'm not even playing optimally because she wants to be solo to get the maximum amount of damage and DR shred. We are actually intentionally kneecapping her amount of DR shred and still doing it like that to Kvastir. I think, honestly, there are so many words in that weapon, I couldn't tell you what I'm really doing. But what I can tell you... is that when we're dropping 100 on everything that comes our way, not much else matters. <laughs> um, so here, Legendary Marth, despite being a bonus unit with a very nice HP stat, kind of showing us that he is not the Giga Chad that we once thought him to be. Or, I mean, that he is no longer that. He certainly was for a while, definitely like a defining unit in Summoner Duels for a minute, if nothing else. Um, so we take some time to think here, and already got one pot. Ultimately, I decided that this could be the one pot I missed this week, and it ended up not mattering, even though we did kind of get down to the wire on ladders. That's not so important, we'll get to that when we get to it. Um, skipping forward a little bit, we kind of just let it rock. And rock it does. Medeus, oftentimes a difficult unit to deal with, doesn't matter. Nana, a unit who actually counters a lot of strategies in this game, doesn't matter. Brave Corin, a unit who is notoriously difficult to do any damage to in a lot of circumstances. We don't even need the special, babe. It's that easy. And Eldigan, who actually shouldn't have had the range. I thought we were going to get the pots. But uh, Tempest Gang is here again. Even with that defensive stat, we are still comfortably bringing him down. So, let's move on to another one that's a little something different. So... This is an extraordinarily threatening enemy team comp. I mean, you kind of just throw winter units together and it's probably going to work. But of course that means that the only solution, the only potential answer to this would be... What but another winter unit. So we have Edelgard. And we are going to do our best to set up because the hardy bearing... Um... If this team had hardy bearing, it was on... Duo Sonicy. So, a lot of the time, you can kind of 
even when there is hardy barrier, you can often chance it. Now, I will say that this is also showing um, the limits of the extraordinarily budget team comp I'm using. Um, there's an argument to be made over the C slot for Edelgard. I would say that probably a far save, like attack res, attack defense, far save, probably attack defense, far save, um, would be optimal. It is really nice to have the ploy to get, um, lower the defenses and exposure just for one-shotting potential, but... It's not, you could really go either way and position would be much easier. It would also be really nice if I had um, really th any unit other than Marth there, but he's the only bonus unit, so we had to use him. But like having Guidance 4 support or some kind of like more player phase threatening unit would be really cool also. There's something to be said for, I mean, you could combine a lot of roles. Like you could make a, you could create a team that had a chain to set up Vantage using... Tea time Lysithia, who could also run Guidance and kind of combine a couple things. Peony could run Guidance. Uh, you could bring Tana in there as a threat, player phase threat with a lot of movement shenanigans. There's a lot of ways to do it. But anyway, turn one went pretty well. We actually got one of them. But now we are positioned, um, I would say, precariously. Because we, I mean, they're just kind of running at us. And again, the problem here is really that we don't have any of those resources. So I can't move to where I want to move. Um, Edelgard doesn't have the movement, doesn't have the multiple actions. So her player phase is severely lacking compared to what you might know her for. And we don't have like a savior skill to make our enemy phase positioning a little bit cleaner, right? Because if we have to put... To one unit next to Edelgard, she's she's probably still going to do the job. She's kind of a good unit. But here things get really tricky, and the play I end up making is to get rid of Sonaki because she is always a large-scale problem. And from here, what can be done is not much. Um, Edelgard will enemy phase every unit that is left here. The problem is just that she could not enemy phase Sonaki, so that required being dealt with. And... To deal with that, we had to overextend, and now I am just <laughs> trying to come up with a strategy. I'll let you know right now, did not come up with anything so we can just skip forward, but I think that this is an interesting proof of concept for this strat, just because, um, Maybe like, she, this unit can do it, the pieces are there, it just would require a little bit more investment, so maybe one day I will make that, or maybe not, but we'll see. Also, just really cool that... Bernie can actually get the KO on Dimitri here. I, I just thought that was neat. But anyway, um, yeah, that spot that Peony is stuck in now, just never going to survive. Even if I had a far save, she would be kind of pretty, pretty doomed. Pretty doomed. So that's that. Let's show one more quick little Edelgard match for a little something different as a little palate cleanse from this harrowing loss. I know it's weird when I show losses, but I'm. Still authentic, Levin said he, it is not only my wins, I am the real thing, you can trust me. So, we have this one, and dedicated viewers, thank you for your time. By the way, subscribers only match, so if you're not a dedicated viewer, pretend like you're one. Click the button, that'll be great. Uh, dedicated viewers might recognize that this was the person who Gale forced, Edel, Edel forced me. Well, I didn't like that very much, so I saved him till my last match of the week and um, tried my best to return the favor. So what's the strategy here? I have set up my Edelgard with Double Fury so that she can get into Wings of Mercy range because um, as much as I like using her default kit and stacking some more stats and stuff, um, it really feels more like a hit and run comp than a proper Gale Forest because there's just no setup. I really like running Bold Fighter on her too, but in this case, um, not necessary. So we actually use Swap, <laughs> which I, I just never gave that Mara 3 position because I am very cheap. 
but it ended up being the ideal move here. And so we go in, we take out Veronica, because we need to move toward the left. I could have advanced just into Yunaka and then Pinoka, but I don't get Wings of Mercy active until my third combat. And at that point, it would be very difficult to actually get someone back over to deal with the Veronica, so we did that first. Now, Asker has been pulsed down to a one-charge Gale Force, despite not being transformed. There's no guard around, so... Uh, thankfully, we can just get the force, take down the Noak, and here is where the actual gameplay starts, because it is... I don't have enough actions here to take out all three of these things. And this is my last match of the week, so I do not need the pots. We are one-turning this, or bust, because I was also actually out of ladders. It got a little bit weird on that last day. So, we use our Rings of Mercy to dance... Edelgard, move forward one more so she can take out Claude, becomes an additional Wings of Mercy beacon, and now we throw in Dagger, who has Flashing Blade, cleanly outspeeds Yoon for that Gale Force, it's the one tap, and now from here I have all sorts of options, we could go for the Faded Showdown of Asker and Embla, or maybe they're friends, they do have a duo, I don't, the stories, I think, don't make as much sense to my brain these days, or maybe I just don't read them, I don't know. But um, it turns out that when Dogger can take down Embla because she hasn't gotten any of her status effects yet, it's kind of funny and we just do it, so that was the play. There it is. Whoop. There it is. <sighs> Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Expect the best. Okay, yeah, that was, that was just some some Edel content, some some Edel guard to think about for you. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for subscribing. We'll be back real soon with some chaos season. Wow, won't that be fun? So uh, till then.